All right, hey guys. So what we're going to be going over for this class session, we're going to be talking about the pre-modern era of the Olympic Games, or as it's better known, is the ancient Olympic Games. So let's go ahead and get started. So of course, we're going to go with how did it all start? So the first Olympic Games actually took place in the summer of 776 BC in Olympia, Greece. Now, uh, it's commonly mistaken that the first Olympic Games actually took place in Athens, Greece, but that is when the modern Olympic Games took place. The very first Olympic Games took place in Olympia. This is significant because Olympia, as well as the Olympics, got their name from Mount Olympus. Now, the reason why that is important is because we'll find out later on that the Olympics were made to actually honor the gods. See, this was viewed as a religious uh, celebration for the Greeks. Now, it was supposed to honor all the gods, but of course, Zeus being the top god gets most of, if not all of the credit for who the honor goes towards. And because the gods lived in Mount Olympus or at Mount Olympus, this is how the Olympics got its name, as well as the city of Olympia, Greece. Now, one of the other things, uh, the games were actually held between warring states and it was viewed as a truce. Now, what I mean by that is, if you take Greece, you have to look at it kind of like how you would look at the United States, how you have one big country and then several states within that country. Greece works the same way. You have the country of Greece and then you have several cities within Greece that kind of operate as their own city states is what they called them. So these city states would fight all the time. They would be at war, whether it be over fighting over territory or if they were fighting over resources that were available. So in order to promote peace, because that was one of the other main reasons why the games were started was a truce was put in place in order to push peace throughout the rest of the city states. So this made it easier for these places to stop fighting. And generally it would last from about six months to a year before the Olympic games started all the way through the Olympic games. There would be a truce during that time period. No one was allowed to fight with anyone. Everyone was just preparing to get ready for the Olympic games during that time period. Now, the other part of this, uh, only men were allowed to compete during the games. There were no women allowed, even though single women were allowed to attend the competition, but married women actually were not. The other piece of that is only men of Greek descent were actually able to compete, so they did not allow any outsiders. Uh, some of the early events that came up at the very beginning of the Olympics were sprinting, wrestling, and uh Chariot races also came up during this time period, but of course those no longer take place. Now, uh, not all these events were there at the first Olympics. I'll go over what those were in a little while, but these events were actually born during the ancient Olympic games. Now, some other ones that are actually still going on now, uh, long jump still occurs. Discus was born during this time period as well. Uh, you had some other events like spear throwing that are kind of similar to some that we have now. And then you also had archery as well. Now, one event that I separated on its own for a reason is the pancration. Pancration, which was basically a death match that was held during the Olympics. Uh, this was viewed as their ultimate fighting competition. Uh, there was no weight classes and they had no time limits for the fight. So once the fight began, it was not over with until either A, somebody was killed or B, somebody gave up and submitted. Uh, the only two rules that there were during the fight was that you were not allowed to bite anyone and there was no eye gouging or trying to poke someone's eyes out. And of course, at the end of this, there actually were not medals given out. Uh, during this time period, the gold, silver, bronze concept of honoring the top three in an event that did not exist yet. There was only one winner, and by one winner, I mean for the entire Olympics. And they actually did not get any type of medals. Now, they were rewarded, just not with what we're used to seeing. Um, 
they were given, a, well, they were actually had a statue that was made in their honor. Uh, these were usually put in their home city states, wherever they're from. But then the other thing that they received is actually what they deem to be a godlike crown wreath. Now, the reason why this crown wreath is so special is because the leaves were made from a specific olive tree that existed um, actually in Mount Olympus. So the Greeks felt like this olive tree was special because it resided in the same home as the gods and it was foretold that Zeus anointed this a special tree. So the leaves were then plucked from, from that tree only during this time of the year or every four years for the Olympics to make the crown wreath for the winner. Now, what was the purpose of the Olympic Games? Well, like I said before, um, they were originally created to celebrate the gods, but the other big purpose was to create peace. They wanted to enforce peace throughout the land. They wanted to get the fights to stop, and they knew this was the most efficient and most effective way to do it because each city-state wanted to represent their land well, so you had to train and get ready for the Olympic Games, which is also the reason why they could have the truce last for so long. Uh, but the other reason was it was meant to keep Greek soldiers in shape in, you know, in case war came about. Uh, as we know that even though there, were, there was a truce going on during this time period, the truce was effectively over as soon as the Olympic Games were up. So this was just to keep Greek soldiers prepared in case something might have happened. As soon as the Olympic Games were over, they were ready, their soldiers were in shape. The other reason for this is because most of the competitors in the Olympic Games were actually Greek soldiers. And then lastly, um, it consisted of just sprints in the beginning. Uh, specifically, there was one 700 foot sprint, or if you want to change that into something as far as meters, it was about 213 meters. Uh, if you've ever been out on a track, uh, you'll see the track is 400 meters around. So roughly about half of a lap was the distance of the original sprints for the ancient Olympic games. Uh, this is also interesting because it wasn't done in an oval. The oval track did not exist back then. They ran in a straight line. Uh, the other part of that is, is that they competed with about 40 members running the race all at one time. So now what caused it all to end? Well, the ending came about in 393 AD. So if you've done your math correctly, uh, the Olympic Games started in 776 BC, ended in 393 AD. So you're looking at roughly uh, a little over 1,100 years of existence for the ancient Olympic Games. So it was a very long time before it ever got shut down, but then you also have to think how many uh, deaths may have occurred during the Olympic Games since you did have the pancreation, uh, that death match, and also there were a lot of injuries sustained during chariot races as well. Uh, even the wrestling matches sustained plenty of injuries. So, this man, Theodosius I, he was the one to actually officially end the Olympic Games. Uh, the reason for that is simply uh, back around the early stages of the, of the AD period, the Roman Empire had actually invaded Greece and taken over. So once the Roman Empire came in, they started enforcing their own laws and their own rules. Well, eventually in 3 AD, the Roman Empire actually adopted Christianity. So when they did this, they started to try and reset a lot of the rituals that were taking place in Greece to fit more of a Christianity faith. Well, the Greeks were pagan, so all of their rituals did not link up with what the new Roman Empire essentially was doing. So starting in 3 AD, once they had converted over to Christianity, they slowly started turning everything that the Greeks did into more of a Christian form, which eventually led to them canceling and ending the ancient Olympic Games, because remember, these were a celebration to the Greek gods, that which made it a pagan ritual and a pagan celebration. So the Roman Empire had to make sure that that stopped. 